Hi, I'm Nick Georgiev. I'm Antilopologist UK Ambassador. We're here at Rack Studios to record the band Nala. Hi, I'm Adrian Bushby. They're a pretty heavy rock band, so it'll be interesting to put the microphones through their paces um, with some pretty loud drums, bass and guitars. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to use an Orion 32 Plus Gen 3 and only Antelope modeling mics for the purpose. Okay, so this is the first session that I've used exclusively Antelope mics. And it was quite an opener actually because they really handled being put through the paces with a loud rock band. So one really nice thing about the Orion 32 Plus is that it's got building effects that are handled by the FPGA chips. And so what we did today is we tracked the vocals with processing on the way into Pro Tools and it was actually a very easy experience. It didn't add any additional latency. It didn't, you know, force us to increase the buffer in Pro Tools. Okay, so when we were tracking the guitars, I started to look into the mic modeling software and not just the, the mic changes, it was also the polar patterns that you could change. And I must admit the effect on the sound was quite outstanding. The song was such that it required us to lay a lot of guitars and one thing which Adrian tried to do is to change the polar pattern and the model for the different takes. And that way you know, every layer would actually have a slightly different character and sound. Okay so we're now we've moved into the live room we're gonna have a quick look around the drum mics and see how we've set it up with uh, which mics we've used. So we've gone for the kick drum First, we start with that. We've gone for the Verge on this. This mic can handle quite high SPL levels, and as you can see, I've got it quite in there because obviously, for this sort of band, you want quite a tacky bass drum. It's going to cut through everything. So this side of the kit, we've got uh, top and bottom on the snare, which again is the Verge. Same reason, really, handles the SPL nicely. And yeah, I'm just I must say, I'm very impressed with the response that it's getting off the off of the snare. Definitely, the attack and the top end is really really quick. Same with the hats, really. They're just they're just really present and there. So I'm, I'm I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. And then we've got a little trick over here, which is quite a nice one. If, if you put this microphone, which is a duo, if you put that sideways facing into the snare here, the bottom side of the capsule will pick up the kick and the top capsule will pick up the bottom snare as well. And if you use the mic modeling software, you can play around with the uh, figure of eight setting. And it's a really cool um, effect that you can hear. You get, basically you can get the whole kick, kick, snare, toms as well really, off of that one mic. And it's really quite a remarkable effect that you can get from that. Not as many symbols, but the thing is that because it's in figure of eight, it picks both the top and the bottom, bottom of the snare, snare yeah. And because it's figure of eight, mics generally have like really strong proximity effect. When you're that close to the kick, you actually get a lot of low end boost. For the tom mics, we selected two different types here. So we used the Verge for the floor tom. With the rack tom, we were getting quite a lot of spill from this symbol. We went away from the Verge mic and went to a solo, which you can angle away from the, the, the problem area, which is this symbol. That's all quite logical because both mics are fixed carded. And so this one is a side dress mic, it's easy to position. And this one is already facing, you know, the back of the mic's facing the symbols. So therefore, I think we get a really good rejection with it. Okay, so with the overheads and rooms, we decided to use the Edge duos so we could use different polar patterns at a later stage in the mix, really, or, or a later stage in the recording. Because if you had selected a solo, you'd have, only, you'd have been stuck with cardioid. So this way we can use figure of A, Omni, and it gives us a wider array of, of emulations in the microphone section to use. So over here, we decided to have a little, uh, little bit of fun. There's no real piano in this track. <laughs> it's not really a piano band. But as, as the piano was so close to the drum kit, we decided to use a little technique where you mic up piano as if you're going to record piano, but then use it to record drum ambience. And it's quite a cool little technique. Once you start compressing and, and playing around with, with the sound and mixing it in with the drums, it's a good little technique to, to try out. Yeah, you can actually put a sandbag or, or a, one of those bricks that we have here on the sustain pedal if you want to have a really long reverb. You know, I'm very curious about the way you approached the session and you know how you actually did some overdubbing with it. Um, maybe can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, yeah. Um, sometimes with, especially with tracking, it, it, and it's if it's uh, with a song that you've worked out quite quickly with the band in the studio, so we sort of routined it very quickly and changed a lot of stuff up. There was a point where I wanted 
I wanted the drums to do a certain thing. So what we did is we tried out some patterns and I was wanting to do a pattern that was sort of maybe a bit tricky to do with the cymbal as well, first go. So we got the pattern together with the toms and then got them to play that and then I overdubbed the cymbals on top of that. And then once you put them together, it sounds like it's playing all in one go. And um, that's quite a good, good little technique that separating the cymbals out. We started the day by, by recording a guide track with everyone in here. I guess that's yeah. mostly to get the vibe and you know the whole life. Here. Yeah, again, because the track was sort of 80% there from the, from the band's demo. I just wanted to sort of hone in the arrangement a little bit and we extended a little bit at the end. So for the amps, I'm going to use a Verge and an Edge Duo as well, pretty close in on it. And I'm pretty sure they're going to handle the volume pretty well. Well, this is what we're here to put them through their pace to see, see how they handle a very loud rock band. And to be honest with you, with the guide sounds, I've already checked them out and they do sound really good already. Just one nice thing about these two mics is that, you know, the Edge Duo can emulate 121s and 438. Oh, okay. And and the Verge can emulate dynamic mic, so that can give you that classic oh, okay. combo of yeah. the ribbon with the dynamic if that's what you're aiming for. We've got the bass over there, we've got an uh, Ampeg Porter Flex, that's covering the bass amp. With this little guy here, we decided to have a little uh, little bit of fun and stick it through a pedal. Found the smallest amp in the studio and distorted for a nice distortion pedal and then this little guy is going to cater for that. Okay, so now we're all recorded, had a good day here and I'm just looking forward to getting into the mix session and having a good look at the, the recording material there. It's time to take control But I'm the one who knows I want and you can stop me now Hi guys, okay so um, we finished our recording session at Rack now we've brought the recording material back to my home studio which I'm lucky enough to have at my house and we're going to go through the song start mixing it with the Antelope Audio plugins and also the help of my trusty SSL. Yeah when we recorded the track we exclusively used the Antelope Audio microphones because I wanted to see what that would achieve to be able to switch the emulations to see what you could create from that and now I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it back and I can I listen to each of the tracks and, and select a, a mic emulation that's, that suits it. As I've gone through the mix a lot of the mic emulations I've selected are not necessarily mics I would have gone to for that instrument so it's, it's very interesting to see how you can really easily just select each model and see what it does to the source the closeness of the source sound and also what's around it it's just a brilliant way of working to to really quickly select something that works right for that track so basically my setup is um at the moment is the orion 32 plus an amazing interface as far as i'm concerned because it's everything's contained in such a small package but it's so powerful so I've got um, I've got 32 ins and outs with my interface is what's they, that's what they come with I mainly work in the box but I also integrate the the desk um, so what I do is I run 24 channels out of the Orion and I set my faders to a null point and I've, I've, I've had these nice bits of glass cut um, and so then I can run almost like pairs out through my desk and then back in to monitor back in through Pro Tools so I get the sound of the desk it's much easier in a workflow if I've got to work on a few projects I can recall really easily without having to touch the desk because I have the I leave the desk set in, in certain pairs that I like the sound of some of them have bottom end EQ some of them have mid-range EQ just monitor out a stereo output um, and just do, do everything internally and so I'll, I'll whiz through my tracks and have a listen to individual sounds maybe get a sort of rough working balance but nothing nothing uh, solid just so I can hear different sounds interacting uh, and I'll put a little bit of EQ on with some plugins maybe uh, but not too much and then once I've got everything in as like a rough balance then I'll start splitting stuff out into the desk and diving into it a bit more and sort of sonics of of what's going on and then obviously I can use my my mix bus compressor and sometimes I'll, I'll pop in some stereo EQ as well so what I did initially was I went I had a listen to so obviously started, well not obviously, but I normally start off with the drums um, and I just went through the mic emulation first off just to check out what the different mics were doing to that to the sound really so for example, let's turn that group off with the kick drum I ended up selecting this microphone not the, uh, obviously not my go-to mic for a bass drum but it was just so brilliant to be able to just whiz through the different different um, models and hear immediately the different sound and that one just 
came to life with every, it had all the thud, it had all the front as well. Because I, I, I was thinking maybe that, I'm assuming that's a 57, yeah, it looks like one, that maybe that was going to work for the kick, but that one, the SM7 one sort of was second in the list, but that one just had it all for me. Yeah, so the, so the, the Verge mic that we used on it, again, it's a good source sound, um, but I think the, uh, that just really brought it to life for me, gave it the thud and the punch that, that it needed. And I did the same with the snare. Yeah, so again, 57, that's sort of generally a, a good, good snare drum mic. It's tried and tested, <laughs> but um, it's really nice to just, just to hear. It's so, it's so crazy to be able to hear the difference that these emulations make immediately. I think again, the, the, eight, yeah, the 86 was another favourite, but it had that sort of mid-range, which is a bit annoying. That just smooths out a tiny bit on the 57. It's just a bit more sort of 3K on that one. Yeah, it just smooths, up, smooths out that spill nicely. Again, it's such a nice way to work where you can just quickly switch between the two without having to uninstall or uninitiate the plugin, and it's just immediate. I had a duo right by the snare that was set to pick up bass drum and snare um, signals uh, and so we recorded that one and then it was really cool to be able to come back here and just really dive in and see what that was that was giving us. So the card yeah the cardio pattern because it's pointing towards the snare where you'd get primarily snare drum but then if we use this channel swap so then it's, it's swapping the capsule to the other side, you should get bass drum, there you go. So it's so awesome um, the, of the control and, and the, of what you can play around with after the event. Um, but I went for this one, which is everything in. <laughs> but you can also like, uh, pan, like mix between full cardioid. So if you had it like that, got more bass drum in there and you wanted to sort of blend in a bit more of the whole lot, you can do that. So that's everything. Again, a really cool way of working where you can play around with so many parameters after the event. <laughs> just a, such a simple setup as a microphone into, into just brilliant into Pro Tools. So with the guitars, uh, I, I went a bit more in depth with different selections, obviously, because I had, I think we had two mics on the cab and then a room back a bit back from the cab so yeah I, I could play around a bit more with what was going on with those so the first one I selected was this form 4 because um, it enables me again to do the mix um, of the polar pattern between cardioid and an omni which sort of brings both the front and the back of the capsule into into play so with this one so that's pure cardioid that's mixing a bit of both of it in there and that's how they were that's how they'd be that that's listening to front and back of the microphone is it yeah yeah so that's that's front of the cab as if you put a microphone straight on the cab and then this is just bringing a bit of the other side in it just adds just more depth to it and just takes away that real too close sort of like almost a too hard focused sound so that was just an awesome thing to be able to do is turn that down a bit so you can hear me. on this uh, mic that i had on the on the amp we i went with the one two one emulation um and it's quite a drastic uh drastic change for the better i'd say so this is the duo sound i mean still it's like it's a good sound you know what i mean it's not a bad sound um but it just jumps to life when you pop this guy in. Just like massive loads of balls and and vibe and mojo. It's brilliant. In this process, once I'd selected my mics, it, it, I mean, it didn't take me long. It was like 10, 15 minutes just to whiz through each track and and just listen to the mics. I, I then went on to diving into some of the, the EQs, that, um, the plugins that come with uh, the Antelope. And initially I started using the AFX on the ins internal inserts in Pro Tools, which was nice. That's like a like way, like a way I like to work. So kick drum. So with this one, you can put. 
So that's flat. That's just a, so then I, I put on a bit of the old um, SSL emulation EQ, which is one of my go-to plugins normally. Worked a load of low mid out, put a bit of front on, just controlled it a bit so it's a bit more focused. Um, and then put my favourite 1176 on there just to tie it all in. Once I'd had a fiddle with individual tracks and had a balance, I then split it out into pairs so I could have it up the desk. So drums, bass, guitars, vocals, um, and then that enabled me to be able to put up master tracks in Pro Tools and I could then delve into the other side of the Antelope. We've set it up in, in the control panel, so basically 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 22, and 23, 24 have all got, um, you can use those as hardware inserts. Set that on your master track and then you go into your control panel and you can start to, so this is my pair that says 17, 18 there. And then I can start to do the same process with the plugins that I was doing in, in, in Pro Tools, but just um, running it off from the control panel. So for the drums, again, I did a, a, an SSL um, emulation, similar to what I do on there, really. So a bit of very high top end, wide, wide band, uh, high mid. Didn't really touch the low mids because I've done a bit of scooping on the individual tracks and then a bit there. Again, not, nothing too drastic. If I, you can bypass, you can bypass the individual ones here. So that's with nothing on. So then a bit of that, a bit of high end, just to bring out the, the, the sparkle up there. A bit that for a punch. God, they're so good. They're so good. Oh, sorry, I'm just raving about it. oh man sorry sorry it's so good um and then uh, again just part of my normal process just a bit of 1170 uh, dbx 160 emulation just at the back just to tie certain things in the snare just it just pulls it back into the kit without squashing it too much i've got everything up running up the desk um so i'll pop the desk compressor in and obviously i've got the sound of the desk as well i then bring that back into the the computer um, and I then end so then that's me so I start in the box I pop out the box to do some analog stuff and then then sort of have a sort of once over and get get more into the mix then and I then route the the, the desk back into the box and then end, end up finishing it in the box so I do my my master processing and my printing in in here it's been a very interesting and eye-opening process of tracking pretty heavy rock band with just one type of microphone well a few types but with just one brand and then bringing it back and, and, and manipulating it and processing it from from this end um, and I must say it's, it's been a really eye-opening I've said that once an interesting process and I'm really am blown away with both the mic emulation and the plugins and I'm really pleased with how the mix has turned out it's time to take control,